Hello Yarn Gang, Nikki Ed, Bunny Crafts Oxford here with another Die With Me video and this is either part one or part two of our little Halloween series. Um, again, as always with me, I don't really know which one's coming out when, um, in terms of which video's coming out when, so meh, we'll find out. So I'm going to jump straight in because Halloween's pretty self-explanatory. I have four skeins of yarn in here. I have three 100 gram skeins and my standard mini. I'm just going to move them around a little bit. Um, so this is going to be quite a random colourway and I'm quite excited because I'm using colours that I'm not necessarily very familiar with, or at least a couple of them I'm not, but that I do love. We're going to be working straight with the um, dry powder. So for the purposes of this video, I will have my safety gloves, um, although I might go put the blue ones on rather than the big thick ones. I'm going to have my respirator mask. Um, I usually use a slightly thinner one, a slightly different mask, but I can't find it today and I can't find where all the other ones that I have of the KN96 masks. So this one will have to do. So apologise if my voice gets a little bit muffled. I'll try and fix that in uh, post-production. And we have some fun colours. So um, I also I also wear glasses, but if I had my contacts in, I'd have goggles on as well. Um, and just to mention again, nothing that you see me use here in terms of the equipment is ever used for food. This is specifically de uh, designated to... Um, my dye equipment so yeah if you're using professional dyes do not use your food pots and pans it's uh, gonna end up being very very poorly so what colors are we using today we're going to be using some electric violet from Dharma and then we're going to use some chartreuse from Jacquard we're going to use some pumpkin orange from Jacquard and then finally Rather than the standard black you normally see used, we're going to use gunmetal. Um, I've only ever used this once to swatch with. It was a very, very dark grey. Um, I don't know whether it would break in these conditions. The reason why I'm using gunmetal and not black is I've run out of black. A little while ago, I ordered a big tub of black because it's one of the colours that I use a lot of. And it's stuck somewhere. Um, for anyone that isn't from the UK, we have been having some delivery problems. Now, um, I don't know why <coughs> Brexit. <coughs> um, but yeah, so our um, store shelves are emptier than they ever were during the pandemic, which is interesting. We're more likely to have a Lural shortage now than... Um, back at the beginning of 2020 but oh well i'm just going to go grab my other gloves and then we're going to start layering this on and i'm going to stop jabbering about nonsense okay gloves is on i'm going to put my mask on apologies for any weird muffled sounds um and we're just going to sprinkle things on it i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with the gunmetal and I'm gonna go quite sparse to begin with I'm just going to do my favorite thing where I take a little bit of dye on my spoon I tap it around and then I'm going to use my metal spoon after I close my my jar of gun metal to do a little bit of tap tap tap. I don't think I'm going to do a lot of tap tap tap. Just going to do a little. And it's you can see it is quite dark, but it is grey. I like that there's some areas that we're going to leave a little bit speckled. So, wipe this 
And I think what I'm going to do is just poke this in here and then wipe it. And then next, I think, I'm actually going to go with the pumpkin. I need to get a new pumpkin as well. Okay. Oh. That will do. Should I'm getting some of the mini as well. Um, maybe when we flip, we'll put the mini in the middle. So with the pumpkin, can you see over here? It like it sort of breaks a little bit into a deeper orange and a yellow. So when you use it like this, it can break, and I think it definitely breaks. Um, when you speckle with citric acid, let me just... All right, I've closed all my jars, so I'm just taking my mask for a second. Um, so, when you speckle with the pumpkin and some citric acid, um, it doesn't break like you expect it to. You get like this really almost red color, and then you get a yellow halo around it. Um, and it's really quite cool. Okay, let's get on with mask back on and some oh, hair and mask. <laughs> uh, some chartreuse. Bring on the chartreuse. So, I want to show you something with the chartreuse. You can see it's quite a um, focus. It's quite a fine powder with the pumpkin orange you see it's it's clumpy and it's like it doesn't separate as easily and that can be really annoying sometimes with the jacquard dyes um, it doesn't happen with the Dharma ones as much it does happen with some of them um, but it just means that when you're sort of tap tap tapping rather than little bits of powder falling as with this one you can get like big clumps this is going to be like a typical crazy nikki colorway and i love it okay. The word where I'm tapping the most is where I can see dye that is just sitting on the surface as well. I'm going to leave that one there because I like it. And when we flip, we're not always going to apply the tap, tap, tap method. Ooh, this is, I'm going to bring you in closer, but the gunmetal is happening here as well as breaking. Oh, mask off again. So the gunmetal is breaking and it's having a lot of blue, which I actually kind of really like. Um, and this will probably happen even further as I add the electric violet. Now I think I'm gonna add a little bit of electric violet and then we're going to leave this and then flip and then we're just going to add the colours as we see fit. Oh. But on this first instance, I want it to have all of the colours in this bit. Okay. So, I have a feeling electric violet is going to be mad pigmented. As a uh, sort of purples tend to be. I mean, I've I've um, I've swatched electric violet before, and again, I think swatching is the only thing that I've done with it. Oh my god! And now, and now it's Halloween. Oh, 
up until now, it was um, sort of mess. Now it's Halloween. Whew, so many steam. Okay. Now, let me see if I can zoom you in. Can you see right here? In fact, I'm going to do this. Nope, that is not what I wanted to do. Nope, that's also not what I wanted to do. That was my stand. <laughs> okay, one, that, there we go. Let me unclip you and hopefully not drop you in there. There we go. Can you see all of the blue? That we've got so the electric vital is broken a little bit as well where we get some pinks which is fine you can really see the blue here from the gunmetal and you can see the electric violet having a bit of a pink halo you're very steamy you can also see a little bit of yellow coming from the chartreuse you can really see the chartreuse breaking here where you've got like the deep green and then the yellow in the center so this is the Aran weight yarn that I have in here and um, let me just pop you back up here oh this is going to be interesting there we go so in the middle I have the Aran weight yarn and because I'm guessing it has much thicker um, fibers the way that it's spun it's still super wash but it's a hundred percent bfl as well so it's a hundred percent wool it doesn't have any nylon or anything added to it what i'm guessing and this is absolute guesswork this is in no way confirmed in any in anything um i'm guessing that um it just is able to break the color better it just shows that breaking better because the strands of yarn are that much thicker so, uh, oh, okay. The violet is taking a little while to absorb, which I guess is understandable. I don't actually. Okay, so there's some areas where it is. I'm guessing my hob is probably not well situated, don't you? Let's move you around. Yeah, so there's some areas where it's um, taken quite well and other areas not so much. I don't want to have it be too muddy. I still want the yarn to have very, very distinct colours. Um, I don't want all of the colours to blend. I definitely don't want to lose the chartreuse, which I'm worried can be very easily done with all of the pinks. The chartreuse over here is broken into a bit of blue and yellow, which is also very interesting. So you can see it's very yellow in the centre and then blue around the corner. So I'm loving all of these breaking. I, I just, yeah. Okay. What we're going to do is again, we're going to leave this for 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to go over my living room because it needs doing. And then when that is done, I'm going to come back and see how this is doing. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've been able to both hoover and wash my floors, um, which has been quite useful. It's a fun lunch break for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'll flip this now so we can actually see what it's like. I'm going to put thick gloves as well so I don't hurt myself and grab my my tongs. Okay. Tongs. So I'm going to So we've had some fun penetration you can really see oh see me you can really see the blue breaking from the gunmetal um which i think is really good fun um because like i get halloween is black and things but you know we also have to work with 
what we have and it doesn't matter it's still quite a dark color i think it still gives us a nice halloweeny feel i hope you agree cool so i think what we'll do though so i'm going to move to move the the mini more in the center cool So I have got quite a bit of yarn in here. Um, I'm definitely happy to have. So the purple is really penetrated. The electric violet has really just gone right through that Aran yarn. I mean, I guess it doesn't have a lot of resist there. The uh, Aran um, yarn doesn't have a lot of strands all together in the loop. So there's, it's easier to do that. So, as I said, I think I'm going to speed this up now. I'm going to put my mask on and just keep layering on more colour until I'm happy that I'm done. We have some dry yarn. Ta da! If you knew how long it has actually taken me to film this part of the video, you'd, you'd laugh. I think it's been about two weeks since I actually shot dyeing this, and I had to go and watch part of how we dyed this to remind myself of what I actually did. So, this was supposed to be. Um, Halloween inspired and I do think that there are notes of Halloween I think what let us down was my lack of black <laughs> oh that rhymes <laughs> sorry I've just tickled myself so um I by the way I still don't have my order of um black acid dye um I'd ordered quite a big packet of Dharma's true black and you know, these things are not cheap because it gets imported from the US, so I've had to pay, like, I'm going to have to pay import taxes when it eventually gets here. It's stuck somewhere, um, either in Calais or um, Heathrow or something. I'm not, I'm not sure, like, I can see that it's in Europe, um, but that is all I can see. And I think part of the issue is um, Brexit, <laughs> uh, whoops, and... Um, also, the fact that um, Brexit's complicating matters in terms of deliveries. So we don't have enough drivers to deliver things. If you've seen the news, you would have seen the UK uh, having a petrol shortage at the moment. And it's not because there's no petrol. It's because there's no drivers to drive the petrol to the petrol stations. That's gas uh, for the Amer for my American and Canadian um, viewers. So yeah, we, we have no no gas to put in our cars. I don't have a car, so I don't care. Um, anyway, let's get back to the yarn, shall we? So, um, because we didn't have any black, we used Midnight Grey. I think it's called Midnight Grey. And that's it here. You see that beautiful blue colour? That's our grey. <laughs> and I think the midnight of it actually says a lot. It, it's, it is a greyish blue. 
Um, I think it is one of those colours that I'm going to have to do a little bit more investigation with and, and just sort of see um, how it does a different depth of shades and stuff. But yeah, I still, as I said, I still think we have a sort of Halloween-y theme with the, with the violets and the greens and oranges. Um, but it doesn't quite, it feels more fall than Halloween. I don't know, what, what do you think? What does this, when you see this yarn, does it invoke any Halloween-y feelings in you at all? Um, I think like this bit does over here, but that is it. Um, so the way I've laid it out is, um, with a purpose. I wanted to show you how the different weights of the different yarns absorbs colour and um does and how color color saturation can actually vary from yarn weight to yarn weight as well as from the amount of dye you put in so this is our aran weight we also have to remember that the different yarns are actually different different types of um fiber so this is bfl this is blue face lester the other two are 80 percent um merino wool 10 um 10 percent cashmere and 10 percent nylon so between the thickness of the yarn the fiber it's made out of and the amount of concentration of dye you're going to get very different results across the board with the same method so the BFL can have a bit more of a glazed look and this is best seen here. So when I say glazed, um, I mean that the penetration of the dye is really quite shallow. And if we were to take the fibres and untwist them, we would see a lot more white. And this is what gives it this sort of it's almost like you dip the top of the fibre, but the inside, and if we were to untwist the individual strands that make up the, the three ply here, we would see more white in there as well. So it's really great fun to get this sort of glazed look. You can see it here with the violet as well. You still get really deep colours. It's just that it's a lot easier to get this sort of glazed look that blue like where is that speckle of blue come from something's broken and i don't know if it's the midnight blue or gray or the violet um so yeah you can you can also see that it's a lot easier actually to break acid dyes to show the breaking of acid dyes on thicker yarn so we've got the orange here and then the yellow seeping out so we've got the the orange breaking very subtly between the darker redder pigment and the yellow so, oh, that's pretty. So we have that, and if you have a look, if you compare it and bring it, so this is the fingering. If you compared how bright the fingering is compared to just slightly how slightly muted the BFL is, they just look, they look different. And then we have the DK, which is sort of in the middle. You have bright colours, but you also have some of this sort of beautiful glazing. You have this sort of beautiful, shallow, more shallow penetration that we have. So these are our yarns. This is our little mini. Um, and again, this is... So they're all superwash yarns. That's another thing to remember. If one of these wasn't on superwash, they are likely to have to be even more muted because... Um, non superwash yarn or oh, pardon me um absorbs color slower so if you have non superwash yarn and superwash yarn in the pan at the same time the superwash yarn will suck up that color a lot quicker leaving a lot less color for the non superwash yarn to actually use up so if you are dyeing yarns that are different um superwash versus non superwash i would advise that you keep them separate unless you want that effect of having the same yarn but having one of them being more muted than the other while also having a sort of almost identical kind of striping or whatever it is that you're doing but yes so this is our halloweeny not quite halloweeny <laughs> um 
batch. I don't know whether I'm going to do another Halloween yarn. Um, life is so busy right now. I can't. I can't wait until the Christmas holidays. Um, working at a university uh, when the first term of the academic year starts is hard work. Anyway, um, thank you for joining me. I'm sorry for ranting. I hope that some of the information that I showed um, is useful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, please. Um, if you're new to the channel, hello, please subscribe. Hit the notification button so that you don't, um, so that's the notification bell, the little bell button. It's like around here somewhere on the video bit. Um, so that you don't miss any future content. And if you want to support my channel um, further, you can buy me a coffee or you can buy one of these yarns. These are all going to go into shop, apart from the mini. I always skip the mini. Um, and yeah, thank you for joining me. All of the links to everything are below the video description. There's like a little triangular thing that you can open it all up. And I'm going to take my, my mushy brain away now. Thank you for joining me. Love you all. Bye-bye.